I'm going to do a little tiny painting, primarily talking about basic of uh, thinking about big shapes and for people who maybe are still trying to figure out how to block in a portrait. I have decided that I'm going to use um, Permanent Matter Deep. It is the replacement for Alizarin Crimson and um, Zinc White. You guys, I have no idea why this is Zinc White. Hmm. Usually we use Titanium White, so I don't know. This is what was Scott gave this to me, so I'm gonna have to look into this. I do not know really too much about the difference. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Honesty. Okay, Viva paper towels. I put some Gamsol in this little jar and I put it right next to here, um, primarily because when I'm filming, I'm gonna keep the camera right here and I don't wanna be, I'm gonna try using a camera that is attached to my chest. We will see how this goes. Um, I decided that I'm going to work on this neutral. This is museum board. I think you can get it from Crescent and Strathmore. Um, it's an acid-free, literally, it's like a color goes all the way through. I buy it in big sheets and I water-based polyurethane it maybe three times on one side and once on the other side. And you buy it in big sheets and then I cut them down. I cut them down into these small little practice sheets. This is about a six by eight and I'm using a white glass palette. I lay out enough paint, you guys, so that I can pre-mix piles. First, I'm gonna be using mainly transparent. This is only gonna be used in the lights. I have a monitor that is very, very close, so I really like putting um, my images as close to my canvas as possible, and I like working at the same size. It's just me, I'm like, make life easier. So you see, I made my monitor horizontal. I mean, excuse me, vertical, <laughs> vertical. This is horizontal, um, which a lot of times what people might call landscape, which is so funny, right? Um, most people think portraits are done in a, the top is longer and the sides are shorter, but I love doing portraits in this sort of horizontal plane or landscape size. The reason also why I'm doing that is because look at her hair shape. Taking photos, we you know we decide to create beautiful shapes and we were maybe inspired by uh, Gustav Klimt or Alphonse Mucha, trying to create a hair shape that's interesting. And I played with it. I use Posterize as a teaching tool so that when I'm blocking in, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking light side of the face and I'm thinking shadow side of the face. And you know, this, ex this ma posterizing makes things extreme. So I, I'm not going to literally only paint from this. This is something like a cheat sheet. I look at this, but our eyes really, really have to squint, have to edit. And what happens is we open our eyes and we start to think that values on this side are as light as values on this side. We start to merge the two and then there's no separation. The posterizing is telling us that there is a separation because the light source is from above and to the left, which means the left side is in the light and the right side is in the shadow. It's relative, right? because it's slightly, in fact, this um, video, you know, looking at this photograph, it's, it's hard sometimes to um, show on a video. So I'll put the photograph here so you can see. But that's what happens when you paint from life. When you paint from life, you see all this bounce. You know, you, it, it, it's not as distinct. So I'm using these as teaching tools to talk to you guys about what I'm thinking when I'm blocking in. The whole shape of the face, this egg, is lighter than anything in the hair. So even though you see highlights in the hair, that has to be much darker than that. 
There's so much to think about, but that's why I'm going to try and do a simple black in. I wanted to just do a simple neutral background because this painting isn't so much about color. It's all about how to think when you're blocking in. It's a small painting, so it it's, doesn't have a lot of um, fear behind it, you know, anxiety of what to do. You know, and I'm thinking, well, how big is her head, right? You literally just take a mark and you just put it over here. If I want to go smaller, then what I will do in my computer, I personally will make it smaller. Now, not everybody does that, but I want, I don't want to fight anything. So I'm going to actually do that right now and make every one of these photos a tiny bit smaller. I went in and I made all the photos the same size and I made them much smaller. I made sure that the head beep, will fit on that tiny little canvas. So then I took a few minutes and I took a little bit of this, it goes a long way. As you start to paint and you paint more and more, you will notice that certain paints are so potent that a little tiny kitten lick will, let's just say, go a very long way. So I had to actually keep adding white to make a very, very clean light. And then this will be my shadow color inside the face. For the hair, for you know anything that's kind of really, really dark, ooh, look at how my finger makes that kind of blurry, um, that will be transparent as much as possible. So those are the things that we learn. We learn that shadows are primarily transparent. In the beginning, as we are learning, as you're blocking in, um, think that way. Think add white to where you want to create light. Think use the variation of transparency um, to create shadows. Working on toned boards, canvases also help you because if I was working on a pure white canvas and I was using transparent, but like say I didn't go dark enough, then the white would show through like a stained glass and, and make my value too light. So we're all learning how to do this, right? Little by little. I like to work on toned canvases. We're going to work on a neutral one today, so it's really just a neutral gray. You can tone a white canvas a neutral gray if you want. You can buy a gray canvas. You can buy a matte board and seal it with clear gesso or a water-based polyurethane. Um, I like working on these because they're inexpensive, and I, I, if I know it's like a, going to be a lesson, I, I give myself a little more slack. You know, I don't worry so much about an expensive canvas. Okay, let's see if this chest harness works. I find this so funny, but I love finding new gadgets. I like being able to film where, from my point of view because so many times I have the camera slightly over my left shoulder. I am using a size eight Rosemary, this is a Pure Sable Series 81, but any sort of um, kind of soft, I would say I'm gonna stay away from a super scratchy bristle, any sort of mixed hair, any sort of synthetic, any kind of brush like that. It's a little bit of a filbert as I've, I've worked on it. It has gotten softer um, as time goes on. So I'm gonna say it's easier to um, block in with a brush like this, also with one that's soft, but not too soft, not too long, not too short and not too long. It's sort of like in the middle because if it's very, very long and it's super floppy, it's hard to control when you're drawing and painting at the same time. You just get used to some brushes. You, you learn the brushes you like. So I, I, I wanna let you know that I put my brush in the Gamsol. I'm not using any medium because the paint itself has enough oil and I don't want you know things to start gliding off of here I don't want once I put paint up here to have it start you know dripping down I feel like um, honestly you know usually paint unless it gets really thick um, and I'll show you some of the stuff in future videos about the mediums that I use when paint gets a little bit you know too solid all right so I'm just always aware how much paint and mineral spirits is on my brush um, 
See, ooh, look, it has a little bit of residue. I was actually painting with a brown color earlier, so I'm just gonna clean it out a little bit. Oh, okay, so let's see, how would I start? Remember my teaching tools, light on this side, shadow on this side. Now that's relative. If we're talking about values, we're gonna say that her hair plane is a value, you know, we're gonna say eight and a half, you know, we'll say eight and a half because you want to leave spaces to go darker. You know, I'm not going to fill all this in with a value 10 and then not have any air. So that's why you might leave a little areas so that you could put a little dark accent. Now, the same goes within the face. You don't want to just block in completely white out of the tube you know, because you want to be able to have space to have a highlight or to go lighter. So in the beginning, we have to judge what is the value that we're going to put right here. And that's preference, you know, um, but I'm going to make an artistic choice and I'm going to judge it as, and sometimes we have to figure out what the value is on this board. So I did add a little bit of pink to this white. It's going to probably, let's see how this looks. It actually looks quite white on this gray. But I know that once I paint it solid, it's going to show up more. First thing I want to do is, um, really, to be completely honest with you, the first thing I want to do is I want to get how tall the head is. So... You see, what I do is I just take a quick measurement, either from the hairline, where the hair meets the forehead, to the chin, or from the very top of the hair to the chin. So I'm just literally taking that mark. I'm going to take a little bit of, so I can just mark it. Just because I, do, I don't want the head to go off, and I don't want the chin to go off. I wanted to place this so that I have enough room to do the hair over here, and enough room to do the hair over here. Her head is slightly tilted. So these are all things that we think about when we're placing a portrait within a space that we've already determined. I mean, if I had a giant canvas and I put a head down, well, you know, I could just crop it. But since I wanted to fit in here, say a miracle of all miracles, and it comes out, and I like it. I mean, you know, fingers crossed, but let's just say, um, I don't want to be sad that you know, I have the face too far this way or I have the face too far that way. This is an important thing to think about, making sure where you put your very first marks. Try not to go too fast with enthusiasm. <laughs> Believe me, I get it. I say that because I've done it. So I'm going to say I want a little bit more room above her hair. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a dot right there and then a little bit where her chin is. See, it's, you know, it's pretty... So there is her chin, and there is the top of her hair. So as I block in her, this little head, I'm going to be as thin as possible, and I'm not going to go dark. I'm going to be maybe a value um, three. That's all I need. I just need to ghost it in just to be able to see, like, where, once you see how thin this paint is, don't have a lot of paint in it, and I don't have a lot of mineral spirits. It's just... It's almost like dry painting. Okay, and I'm gonna hold, notice how I hold the brush. I'm not holding it like this because I probably would have to have my pinky to like steady my hand and I don't have a lot of movement because of this. If I hold it like this, I can move from my shoulder. And that's the idea of, of learning how to draw from your shoulder. So you see how I can do this and I like to be able to do wide, where is the top? I want you to see how light I'm doing it. Where is her chin? I could even do a very gentle, just down the center. I could do a, a quick little, how wide is her face? So these are just little markers. Um, of course, I'm gonna, they're gonna disappear right away. I'm just trying to get the width. Using only the paint, no mineral spirits, just to, I'm not going to worry that much about drawing either, right? This whole s sketch is a study in training myself to draw and paint, to think in value, and a 
application. I think of the paint too as, a, as like a dry media in the middle. I can even say, well, it appears like the eyes, right? This is all just for helping me place it because I'm gonna paint right through this stuff. And then just a little bit. I'm always thinking, what is the least amount of paint? I do, I love doing quick sketch gestures because it teaches me to think in these long, how far does it go till it changes direction, till it goes down, till it changes direction. And then lots and lots of like, well, is one eye higher than the other? Is, you know, one ear higher than the other? These are things that you just train yourself. And look at, I could even do this. This is why it's so great to have your photograph be the same. Because as we paint and gesture, and as I talk and I'm trying to be funny, you know, like all of a sudden the head could get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we teach ourselves to stop and reevaluate, stop and reevaluate. So the hair can kind of go off the page a little bit. Just, it's like, like a big shape. The hair is a solid mass. We think, think like a sculptor, solid mass. Everything is very transparent. Nothing is set in stone. Like where does that come up? Pretty much around her mouth. If you did these all the time, you just get better and better and better at judging. Okay, just clean up my brush a little bit. Okay, now I know that overall the face is so much lighter than the hair. What I think I'm going to do teaching how to block in a face is doing your largest shapes first. Okay, so I'm just trying to, sometimes I just figure out like, what is this brush good? This is a kind of a short um, Sable 77 size 8. I do, I, I mean, I, I don't. I don't, I'm not super kind to my brushes, but you see when you push down, you see how it splays? So I can push, I can push, I can carve. All right, so let's take some of this paint with no white and let's scumble. Let's just scumble because if it gets too solid, the great thing about using paint with no white and being very thin and transparent is I can always clean up and I'll show you that a little bit like you draw with this paint without white because if you put down the white of the face and then you try to carve the hair around the face now you can approach paintings and portraits so many different ways but when we're doing a little fast block in like this Let's think about the largest shapes possible and let's not think about features. Features are going to be the last. We're getting the large, so the see of angles. You see how I can like, I can like scumble like this. I can also just put my brush down and push up. So there's like a difference. It's a little bit more solid and it's a little bit more broken. So you start to play with brush. You start to play with how certain brushes will um, act different, especially because this is a very smooth canvas, it's a smooth board. So you see how I'm, I'm kind of feathering and parts of it can be a little bit broken, but it's important that I say it, tell people what the shape is. This hair shape has a certain width. So I, I don't want it to be so broken that somebody doesn't understand how far the hair goes out. All right, this can kind of go off a little bit. Now, say I want to pick some of that up. Let me see what happens when I use a, a bristle. You see how just using a bristle creates a little bit of a scratchiness. Now you can do that with a palette knife. It's literally just picking paint up and you can create air. So if I got too thick, so let me be a little bit more obvious. So I take a lot of paint, 
a lot of this paint, more opaque. And I put my brush down and I just, so now you see how dark that is, right? Now there are two different kinds of paint application. There is thin. The thin also makes it a little bit lighter because some of this is showing through. If we put a more solid, then it looks darker. Okay, so let's say I don't like that. Well, first thing I can do is just lift off with a bristle brush. So that's how you can create air. Now the great thing about working with this type of paint and having a very non-absorbent is like you can just use your paper towel as like an eraser. You know, that's just my paper towel without any mineral spirits. But what if I actually used mineral spirits? You see how you can just draw and pick it right up. So the first part of painting is working with one color, really trying to understand the difference between how to use a transparent and opaque, working with different brushes. You know, you have a soft hair brush and a bristle brush and the differences in how they work. Also a flat brush to maybe a round brush. So learning brushes is so important so that you can then have control and you can do all the different styles that you want. Okay, so now, now that I, I kind of have this hair, you know, you guys, this is, this is gonna be quick. This is like me teaching myself where are all the darker shapes. So if I use more paint on this brush, I can just, I can just kind of lay it in here and have fun with these strokes. But notice that there is no canvas showing through. So that is important. You kind of, you can play within the shape of being thick and thin, but tell people the shape. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing the light and the shadow side. So let's do the shadow first. And I don't wanna go too thick. So I'm gonna have a little bit of this transparent, a little bit of this middle, which is really just white and the permanent matter. I don't want it to be too thin, I, meaning I don't want a lot of medium, I don't want a lot of gam salt, because if I put it down, it would become so slippy that I wouldn't be able to put anything on top of it. So I want you to also see, like I can scumble. It's almost like I'm using a pastel and every canvas is gonna be a little bit different. Some canvases will grab this. Other canvases are gonna be very slick like this. Of course, I think that it's maybe a little bit easier to work with a smooth, non-absorbent. Remember this neck, you guys, this neck is not as light as the light side of her face. I'm thinking largest shapes. Okay. Just scumble it in. The idea is, you see how I kind of scumble up to this edge of the hair? Remember, if I had put some of this white down first or any of this paint that had white in it, then I tried to put this hair on top of it, it would mix together and it would change value. So we're also thinking about, you know, it's almost like making a layering cake. How do you, what are the things you put down first? Well. You want to put down your darks and your transparency first, and you put your lights on top of that. In general, you know, we're, I, I can only teach one thought process at a time. So this is going to be, this process is putting down your darkest, big shape, transparent. Now I'm scumbling in with a thinner, no, no I've not added any mineral spirits. So it's really just dry paint, you guys, and it's just scumbling and I'm sort of layering it. And some of that canvas is showing through, meaning it's not 100% opaque. I can always go thicker and darker if I want. So kind of, kind of lead up to it, you know? So if, if you're learning how to paint, don't put too much paint down that you're having problems um, you know, it's like it gets too much and then you, you can't paint on top of it. You have to build up to that. Okay, so I'm just taking out as much paint as I can and I'm gonna pop in. I think this zinc is making my paint a little bit transparent. I think that's, the, that's what's happening, but I'm just gonna work with it. 
So you see how I just put it down. I can have the light part of the face a little bit thicker because lights have they can be thicker. It also shows dimension. So the light being thicker actually is telling somebody that that's where information is. Shadows can be thinner because that's not where light is, remember? Shadow means that there isn't light there. So if you find, see like, since I, this might be my first time using or not, you know, I'm not so used to using the zinc, I might let it tack up a little bit. And what that means is like, you might put it down and maybe I might fiddle with it tomorrow. But you see how I'm having a shadow on this side and light on that side. Shadow, light. I'm not worried at all about features, you guys. If you worry about features, then you'll be painting around things and you will get very frustrated if you do anything that's tiniest bit off that you don't like. It will just be a, a circular frustration. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to paint this whole eye socket. Just walk, figuring out where these eyebrows are. Now I'm drawing and painting at the same time. This is for people who have drawn a face before. This might be a little bit intimidating or it might be freeing to think about large shapes. So I'm not drawing the eye, I'm drawing the eye socket. So you see, the whole eye socket is from the top of the eyebrow through the eye, through the eye, all the way underneath that muscle. So everything in this socket, which is interior of the face, is going to be a slightly darker value than the forehead, cheek, or nose, because those are coming forward. It's all about planes of the head. Now in this photo, it's a little bit more hard to understand. Now, I've done enough faces, and if I squint, I can see that this is darker than the forehead, but what happens is we open our eyes, and we think that the whites of the eyes, or we think that the eyelids, we think all of those things are as light as areas, but usually what happens is we make them too light. So I'm just blocking these in. I'm probably gonna have to make these shapes a little bit smaller because you know what, it's actually not, you know, to make a head tiny and to keep it tiny is a, you know, sometimes they tend to grow on us. So I'm up upper lip. See how I'm just dabbing, I'm hinting. Get some more of that white. The good thing about only using a light and a middle value is that you can block in and then it's like carving. So instead of using an eraser to clean out, you take some of your light and then you carve back. See, it's all about choosing the right brush and the right pressure and just thinking about in angles. And like say you try to do this in 25 minutes, then you could just do lots and lots of blackens without all kinds of um, expectation because expectation kills a painting we start to double we start to like um, judge our brush strokes too much very 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 simple face shadow light there's nothing in this eye socket that is as light as that so I can't put anything in there it's all about values and relationships I started my little portrait yesterday and um, I showed you guys the zinc white and I honestly, it's funny when it, I just put out the paint without looking at the tube first and while I was painting with it, I was like, hmm, this is very transparent. Now, I always hate when people ask me questions about materials because I only know the stuff that I work with. I have not really, really investigated like a scientist what's out there. I highly recommend those books because I've been flipping through them recently and I just ordered both of them. The um, Materials book and the Still Life book by Todd Casey. 
it's been a, they've been around for a while and then I noticed them and they're such when I was looking through a friend's book I was like this is so good he deserves such a huge success for all the work that he's done so he has done all the research and what I did was I bought the books so that I can then read them and help people out for questions but I'm gonna I'm gonna like lead you to him. Please buy his books. Please go to his website. Um, I'm limited in what I'm teaching, right? So I'm gonna teach my little lane and he's gonna teach the broader lane. I bring that up because when I was working with the zinc white, I'm like, God, it's so transparent. It's like a little bit too thin. Hmm. I can see using this, like sometimes when I do um little portraits and i need to just maybe just very very translucently maybe just brighten an area in a face and i don't want it to go too opaque this would be perfect um in general i like titanium white i like it to be a little bit more opaque because i want my lights and my shadows to be different um I actually went home and I asked Scott and I said, oh, you know, you gave me zinc white. Did you know that? And he was confused too. And so we don't know how we got this. Either it was a mistake. How, you know, sometimes we all make mistakes when we order stuff. Um, I have in the past used a zinc titanium, but in general, we just use titanium. Um, anyways, look at this. Oh, so this is gambling titanium and I mean literally you could I sometimes I'm thinking like while I'm taking a break I could just do some biceps and you know squats with this because um I mean look at this these so you open it up you know with one of these these like paint you know so you open it up like this and I actually bought these for Scott because he uses so much paint and you can buy all different kinds of colors oh um I know Gamblin has these and maybe some other companies do but look at that, oh my gosh. This, this will literally, hmm, years. The way I paint, years. Um, so I'm gonna use the titanium from that today to finish this little, you know, it's a kind of a, hopefully a tutorial talking about the different ways I use my monitor, the way I mix my paints, maybe using one color, the thick and thin, the transparency in the shadows, the opaqueness in the lights and the, the transparent white was just not wasn't like a part of the plan yesterday so um i've come back i am using uh you know this neutral gray museum board you can use anything you guys you can use a you can just get canvas and tone it with a neutral gray if you want to do that you can do um just an ivory uh black um you can use maybe a little bit of ivory black and maybe a tad of like a yellow ochre um it's just a neutral, right? So it it doesn't really matter. I like the idea of working with a warm against a cool. So I probably wouldn't try a red on a warm background. Um, it's just, you know, I like having those um, duality. I like having the warm and cool and having the surface be a certain temperature. And then when you put something opposite, it's already electric. And uh, okay, so I'm gonna work a little bit more on this. I just wanted to explain to you the whole zinc white thing and definitely read the Todd Casey books. I, I think he has gone into it and I'm just so happy somebody has. And I'm sure there's a lot out there, but his books are modern and beautifully produced. So I'm just gonna highly recommend them. When you paint so small, you kind of have to use small brushes, dang it. Anyway, so I'm looking at, you also see that I have some short handle and some long handle. Now, the short handle are the ones that I prefer. I, I can understand long handle, like you're holding it away and you're kind of having your hand back here and okay. Um, in general, the pros and cons. The pros are short handle are cheaper. Um, also, they fit in pushad boxes easier when you travel or you're, you know, just moving your case around. Uh, you know, that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. Okay, so this is a, I do tend to have a lot of these pure sables, but I will use, oh, look at here's a red dot. So uh, Rosemary has all kinds of different types of these soft hair brushes. And um, 
I use all of them. So, and I don't, you know, I don't baby my sables or my kind of softer brushes. I really like it. You can scumble and you can do all kinds of stuff with these. So don't feel like, you know, they're only for finishing. Okay, so this is a Series 81, Pure Sable, number six. This is a Series 272, um, number two. And I think this is like a mixed kind of hair. Um, still like man-made. Um, this is a red dot. And we've both Scott and I have really gotten into these riggers. Oh, yeah, there's a little. So you see how long this is. I mean, it's it kind of when you press down, you see how it gets it gets fatter, but then you can also like once you get paint on it, you can do like a point. And these are great for when you're doing small little paintings and you put it down. Um it really has a good touch. So if you, I would suggest trying these riggers. And this is a Red Dots number two. All right. This, I just chose a bunch of varieties. So this is a Series 278. This is, looks like one of those mixed hairs. It could be um, a master's choice, um, size number two. I have worn this out so much. So you can tell some of the you know, hair has disappeared. But I love it that way. And it's perfect for when you're painting this small, you know, to kind of put down and, and it's a little bit splayed at the end. I mean, I really like that. Okay, so series 33, series 81. Um, these are both different types of sables, but like I said, you can use only the red dot, which is fine. So this is sort of like a point and this is a little bit of a, like a filbert. So I just kind of chose some good um, smaller brushes. And now I'm going to go into my secondary shapes. I got my titanium white out. Let me, let me um, mix up some new light. So what I did was I really did want to show you, look at this. I want you to see how little I take. This is going to stain. You, some paints are so strong. I was here, you know, sometimes... It's funny when there's like, oh, look at that. Oh my God, look at that. A little bit like you could have this like permanent matter for years. Um, you know, certain fluorescents, certain colors like this, <laughs> it's like mystery. It gets on your hands. It gets all over the place. But I want you to see how you saw how I just, I mean, I hardly did a nail scratch in there. So this is a tiny painting, so I don't need that much. But I'm also, I almost think that this is too dark. So you see how that is actually a little a bit too dark. So I need to, this is why sometimes you use up all your white. Because you're just trying to create a value, a big pile of your value of your light. So that when you're going in and you're, like, remember I was saying how positive and negative. You put in your shadows, then you put in your lights. And instead of erasing, you're literally just laying paint down and leaving it. And I think this is a little bit better. It's hard to tell you guys. I, I have a basement studio, so I get these fluorescents. And sometimes, since my palette is glass, let's see what this is. So I'm going to smooth it out so you can see that it is a little bit pinker than that. It's all about just tinting. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to use. All right. So now I have my titanium in my white, which will be a lot better. Let's move the camera. I'm playing with my chest strap. This is so much fun. Okay, now let's get back into painting mode. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna see about laying some thicker strokes on top of what I had because this paint was so transparent. And it's still a little bit, oh, I see a little bit of a hair that's kind of getting rogue. Um, because it's, it was so transparent, this is what happens with paint. And when it's too, I like to use the word slippy, um, you know, wet, glossy. This is why also, you see how I'm kind of, once I put the paint down, it lifts it up underneath. So this is a good video for people to understand why maybe they're frustrated, you know, why things are not going the way they want. Okay, 
So what happens? What if I find myself putting too many strokes? What I would do is I would change to a bigger brush. I really love um, these uh, Series 81. It doesn't matter. You can use a red dot. But it's like, um, you see, it's like a, a filbert. It's slightly rounded. It's middle hair. It's not it's not too stiff to where it's so hard it can't move. Like you see, I can push it down and it will splay and that's what I want. So it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to pick up paint and do a bigger stroke. See, a bigger stroke. So this lesson is all about separating and filling in. And if I hadn't had some of that slippy paint underneath, you know, you won't have to worry about picking anything up. This video is not about edges. It's not about subtlety. It's about filling in large masses and thinking about how to do that. So I chose a bigger brush for the bigger shapes. See? And hopefully you just, I mean, best of all worlds is that you just leave it. So I'm gonna use this middle paint. You can see the difference, it's pinker. So I'm gonna use the same brush. And I'm just gonna about put it here. I really don't want to worry too much about half tones. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into a much smaller brush. If I find this is too slippy, I might have to wait till it dries. And that's a lesson for you guys. So first I'm gonna just try. So I'm gonna take some of this permanent matter and I'm gonna make just a little bit darker so that when I create that middle shape in the eye, it's not pure, it has the littlest bit. So I'm gonna say it's a value maybe around an eight, seven and a half, eight. I'm using my uh, 272 round, and I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna walk over, figure out where the tear duct is, and just paint puzzle pieces. Oopsie, I'm always having to watch out for little hairs that come off. So figure out where the eyebrow is, come down, witness how I put a stroke down and I and I wipe off because you know what? I might have picked up some of that white underneath. When we're painting this small and we're thinking about this as an exercise, I'm not worried about being perfect. So if this is the shadow on the inside of the eye, walk over, here's the dark of the eye. Picking up more paint, here's the eyelash of the eye. And there's that little bit of that. So it's, it's like um, shorthand. How do I paint this little face in shorthand? And don't worry about drawing them. So this is just the shadow on the inside of the eye. That value that I did to begin with, see now I take some of that value that I had of the dark of the eye and some of that kind of middle, it's very, very light. I mean, it's probably like a two value two. So now I'm going to go in between. That's why it's good to have these piles here. And just create that little shape underneath the eye. I mean, I don't even... I have to stop myself from touching the canvas over and over again because if I keep touching it, things will get lighter and more middle. So this will get lighter and this will get lighter and everything will become more middle and it will become blah. I'm probably going to be using this little brush for a while because these features are so small. I keep telling myself that what is the least amount I can do because this is a block in. I'm teaching myself large shapes. Before I go down, I'm going to do both eyes because her head is slightly at an angle. Now, like say we're drawing or anything, I need to put my brush up and I need to see, okay, where does that eyebrow, where does that eye come to that other one? And so I see that the eye lashes come 
let's walk over the form. So I walk over here and then I walk up and over the light and I walk down the shadow to where the tear duct is. And then I'm gonna put a line to where exactly the top of the eyelashes are. And as you paint, sometimes you have to go back and reestablish and reestablish because as you paint, all of a sudden an eye will get higher. And you have to reestablish that one eyebrow is lower than the other. So you walk over, walk over, walk over, and then make sure that that eyebrow is lower than the other. Do you see how I'm painting these shapes on top of this kind of transparent shadow or, you know, tone that is differentiating, differentiating, hmm, differentiating, differ I don't even know how to say that. Okay, <laughs> light on the left and shadow on the right. So I'm, I'm trying to keep this value on the right just a little bit less, right? So I'm just, remember, I keep, see how I keep walking over? We walk, 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 walk. That is, if it's gonna keep me keeping this eye at a littlest bit of a lower. So I don't see a lot of darks around this eye, but the eyelashes and the actual dark of the interior, you know, the, the main eye color, and then the eye shadow, I mean, and then the eyelash. Just a little bit, you don't need a lot because this is an editing. This is not full value, full detail. It is an editing process and I'm teaching myself. And you know, what happens is sometimes as we paint, we like change, you know, things kind of morph and they move. And um, it probably what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to turn it upside down. So, let me put my brush up, let me double check where's the bottom of the eye. One eye is usually a little bit bigger and one eye is usually a little bit smaller. Okay. We're gonna put a little bit of a value just to show that supposed white of the eye, but I don't, I can't go too white. I have to make sure that that white of the eye stays in here. So you see how I'm putting down strokes to mimic the shape of something. This is very um, advanced in a way, but the idea is that you do your larger dark, your larger light, your larger shadow, and then you put these middle shapes on top. And don't freak out about the, um, the drawing yet. You tweak it as you go. Meaning, we're just trying to get the big stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my brush down and I'm using this posterized version, the middle posterized version, and I'm going to, once I get these shapes down, then I'm gonna to go to the actual photo for any sort of subtlety. So you see that's where the line comes and then that's where the shadow underneath the line, underneath the nose. Don't look at the nostrils, paint right through it. Just paint right through it. I'm gonna just clean this up because this is getting a little bit, making her look like she has a big, huge bump in the nose. So I'm gonna make it a little bit straighter. All right, so now I want you to see how I'm kind of just using extremely thin paint, just kind of going on what's in here, no mineral spirits and no medium. All right, so I walked down, did that, went underneath the nose, and now I walk from underneath the nose to the top of the lip. And I just put a little bit of a value to show that upper lip. And then I walk over and then I show underneath. So these are the five darks of the face. And I already can tell that this eye is probably gonna look wonky, but I'll fix that later. Um, so here's one dark, the whole eye socket, another dark underneath the nose, another dark underneath the top lip, underneath the bottom lip, and then underneath the chin. So that's the five darks. One, two, three, four, five. It is very noticeable with light coming from underneath, uh, above. This light is coming from above and to the left. It's still noticeable. Even when light is coming directly from the side, 
you will see the planes of the face that is going interior, exterior, interior, exterior. And that's what it's all about. It's just about in, out, in, out, in, out. Where does the side of the mouth come? To the eye. Go directly down, directly down, and put a little point. The lips, especially these tiny little shapes out here, you're just hinting at them. You know, and you see how I'm just softening up? Just kind of make that bottom look just a little bit pinker so it doesn't look so white because you see how it has a little bit, it's a softer, it's a softer term. I do that just so that my brain starts to understand it's a lip, even though I know it's in the light. So this muscle under here, kind of, this is, this is starting like the half tone a little bit. I'm just subtly bringing down this muscle. This can't go too dark. It's in the light. Half tones are in the light, meaning any of that transition from light going into shadow is still in the light. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit and see exactly where her head is tilted. So I'm gonna try and keep all the features at a tilt. Sometimes what happens is as we paint, maybe the lips become straight, but the eyes are tilted or the opposite. So if my eyes are slightly tilted this way, then I have to come down and make this side of the nose a little bit higher than this side. Come down, making this lip a little bit higher than this, so you bring it down. And you just have to manually do that so that you understand that the head's tilted. So you just have to make sure that everything is at a tilt because our brains will trick us. And even the chin. Everything is at a tilt. I like to disappear the neck a lot underneath. So this edge from the hair, the hair to the neck, you know, is a little bit softer, disappearing. It's a little bit softer, disappearing. Okay, I'm gonna put just a little bit, I feel like this got a little bit too soft right there. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that, just to show that that's, you see how delicately I put that? We really want the lips to be as soft as possible because lips are always in motion. So the softer they are, the more um, natural they look. Okay. So now it's just how much do I put? And I'm using such a tiny brush already. I might have to use an even smaller brush. All right, so I moved to an even smaller brush. This is a zero, oh my God, but look at how big it looks compared to this face. So what do I use with this brush? Okay. I took a very, very, very transparent, see, so just kind of did that. I want you guys, one of the biggest lessons of today is a little bit goes a long way. I feel that I just want a little bit more turning in this eye right here. And I'm going to put a little, I'm going to add a little bit of dark. This is really just the matter kind of all by itself. And I'm going to on top of this. So then we had that biggest shape underneath and then we had these middle shapes. Now on top of that, I'm going to put people just there on top right there from the eyelash going down and it kind of kind of goes right up into that eyelash this is the tricky part when you start to put these shapes because the more I touch this but that's okay we're learning how to use the brush and where to put these darks. So just that dark right there, and then just a little bit. I don't want it to look like she has clown makeup on, but maybe just a little bit on the eyelashes. And remember, 
the white of the eye is shadowed by the eyelashes. So it can't be too light in there. I'm going to round the eye along here on the edge over here. I learned so much from um, Mucha. Alphonse Mucha really and John Vanderpool. I'm going to put a little bit more of an eyelid right here. And then just take a little bit of this dark and just put a little bit of an accent right here. Hardly even notice it, but it's just right in there. It's like a little crease. And then just do a darker dark right underneath the eyebrow. Try and find one little spot in the eyebrow where it's dark. And then it kind of tapers off. The eyebrow from the peak going down this way is always a little bit softer and a little bit lighter. Could you imagine if you just did these little faces over and over and over again? Just getting used to how to abbreviate these little features. A little bit of a muscle underneath the eye. Sometimes literally just mushing the paint that's underneath there but you just have to get used to how to do it without completely taking off the paint and without completely changing the drawing. Hmm, all right. I think I feel I need a little bit more of a muscle underneath to show she has beautiful deep set eyes so you see how i put a little bit of a muscle right there i really want to show the difference between her eye sockets and the light of her cheek and her forehead okay the brow ridge that goes in between the a little bit softer because I kind of the brow the bone goes straight across so I'm just gonna like have it go a little bit straighter I actually do like using these like softer brushes because I feel that when you use very pointy so I think this little splayed softer brush is working better for me it's easier to have control I think Unless you're doing like an extreme highlight, those little pointy brushes that I was just using, just, um, it's too extreme. It was taking off paint, so every time we do stuff, we learn. So this shadow that kind of comes across, so this brush is helping me out a little bit more. And honestly, you guys, I'm picking up some stuff that's underneath because that paint was so, still wet, still wet from yesterday. So this goes right into the side plane, the temple, and right into the hair. I'm picking up just the really hardly any paint. I'm kind of using more paint that is already here. Okay. Remember this eye is lower, so I go down and I walk, 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 walk. Remember the darkest part of the eye is right underneath the eyelash. See, number one lesson here is just using a very soft touch. Very little paint and soft touch goes a long way because then you can always fix. See, look, I took went back to my pointy brush because I, feel I just need to clean up a little bit. You see, now, now this brush is handy. Now it's helping me clean. So every brush has a beautiful um, way of working, and so that's why not one is good or bad. Always figure out exactly where the high point of the eyebrow is, and you kind of go up to it, and then you go down. Always trying to figure out where that arch is. Now, not every eyebrush, eyebrow is the same. Maybe some aren't as arched, but there's always going to be a darker part of the eyebrow that's more towards the nose. 
darker here, and then it gets lighter as it goes above the bone, and then it gets thinner and a little bit less dark as it starts to transition over. I'm gonna do just a little bit of a muscle plane underneath. Sometimes I do these things and then I really don't see my mistakes until I turn it upside down because inevitably the upside down test is the best test. Now I feel like this paint is picking up, so. Okay. I'm gonna take this soft, this is a Series 99 around, and I'm just gonna take some paint. See how little bit of paint I use? And I'm just going to, just want to kind of soft, put a value in between the hair and the skin. I don't really want to add paint over on this side. I'm just transitioning this edge. And sometimes literally just using a soft brush and manipulating that paint that's already there is all you need. I always think of it as like, like a pastel or something. I'm just kind of manipulating the paint that's already there. See, just the, the softer parts of this brush at the end. Where is the side of the nose compared to this eye? The reason why I talk like that is because I'm kind of angling my painting a little bit, which might hinder me from seeing the exact alignment. Why is life so hard? Why can't we just do anything we want and not have to deal with physics and what's, what is well, you know, what we're allowed to do with what we have. So figured out where that was, that angled down here because there's a little bit more light over here. I'm not gonna go in and I'm not gonna do like, you know, nostrils. Nostrils are tiny, tiny little baby shapes that honestly nobody wants to look at. So especially in a painting this small. Okay. Double check, where is that side of that mouth? I do a vertical. And inside the shadow over here, this is important. Keep these values, you, you wanna see them, but you don't wanna go so dark and so hard. And I wanna make sure this side of the lip is higher than this side of the lip. Okay. What is necessary? What is necessary? <laughs> you are in the mind. You're in my mind. Okay, how do I make this so simple? See, reestablish. If I feel like the drawing or things get a little bit too messy, go back with my big pile of my lightest light. You see how I can actually make it pretty thick too? Now, if you know where the drawing is, you can just like put your strokes down and leave them. You are my guinea pigs for me playing with my little video thing. Up and down, what is the best angle? <laughs> you know, how do I get good close-ups? That's all right. We'll figure it out. So, in general, this whole thing is like, what if you just did a whole bunch of these little blockins? Oops, almost dropped my brush. I have to make sure the chin doesn't come too far forward. Walk over. There's the bottom lip. Walk over. See how you're trying to just put a, a stroke down to create this puzzle piece. The best case scenario is you put it down and you don't touch it again. That's the best case scenario. I'm always trying to think how can I put a brush stroke down and leave it? Now that is actually pretty advanced and that's actually too light. So you see how hard it is. I put down a stroke to show that little bit of that light on that lower lid, but then if I make it too bright, 
it comes forward. It is all about putting in, taking out, putting in, and let's just not worry so much about drawing and just think that we're doing abstract faces and we're just using this reference as a guide just to show that there's eyes and nose and that the light is on the left side you know these type of things we're just thinking about it as a guide i just know that the, the more i worry about um getting exact likeness the more i fiddle so i kind of went back to my big brush Just because, I, you know, I'm just trying to get a, 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 the smaller the brush, the more you see the stroke. The bigger the brush, the softer you can create the transition. And so sometimes you start off with your biggest brush and then you go down to a middle and then a very tiny and then you go back to your big. And I had told you that, you know, having this sort of longer hair, it allows you to put down a stroke and have the ability to put a stroke on top of another stroke. Because just like say you're doing pastel, say you are, you know, you know how we work with like, a pastel pencil, a, pa a soft pastel. As you know, those have different types of mark making. And it's the exact same thing with a brush. They're just mark making. And it's, and the smaller, you know, the smaller brush would obviously create more texture, more, um, you know, it would, it would, diffuse this larger shape. So I'm going to soften this. So I have to touch this so soft to, to, soft, to um, soften it without picking up. Gosh, that's the whole thing about painting. It really is. It's learning which brushes and which surfaces because you can practice drawing and drawing and drawing and getting things in the right plane. I'm just going to walk over. I want you to see it walk over. I walk over. And I walk down to the tear duct and I'm just going to put, did I make it too light? I'm going to touch really, really gently just in case. So if you touch your canvas gentle in the beginning, almost like you're testing it out. Like, is it too hot? You know, <laughs> like, is this too hot? Because if you test it out gently in the beginning, then you can always go more dramatic and darker later. So I'm just going to get a little bit of it just to where that um, lid goes in. Posterizing helps a lot too because it edits for me. Now this is a certain type of block-in, you know, painting something this small is, um, it teaches it also, you know, can be a little frustrating if you don't have the right brushes. So if you only have big brushes, it will be very difficult to do this. So you need to paint the size of your smallest brush so that you don't um, struggle. And I really recommend you try using some mixed hairs, even, you know, synthetics are fine, but like so that you can have like this sort of splayed look. If your brushes are always so pristine and so flat and so rigid, you're not going to be able to lay paint on top of it. So you see, I'm going to put this brush stroke up and then come down. A little bit of a stroke right here just to show that it goes in. My whole goal is to leave this tone that's underneath as much as possible. All this stuff. I'm not going to worry about like edges and you know that too much. I'm just going to like what is in the light and what is in the shadow. I almost feel like honestly, I'm going to say this could be the lesson. Because what did I learn? I learned about hey, zinc and titanium white. I learned about how to block in a solid hair shape. 
I learned about how to block in a very clean light and keeping them separate and having this be more opaque than that. I learned about using long hair brushes and splayed brushes and, um, you know, and how to put a stroke down and leave it. And then the more I touch it, you see how the more I touch, the more it gets, the value goes away and I pick up paint. So this, you do need a lot of trial and error. So, you know, no matter how much I say this to you, you're going to need time to just do it and like get frustrated and just be open to the idea that it can get frustrating, but you're going to live through it <laughs> and it will, you'll be better for it. Okay. So oh, look at my little pinky. See, I was touching the hair. I'm going to clean that up. You can like clean up like this. That's the good thing is just clean up that outer edge with some Gamsol and a paper towel. In the beginning, in your very first tries like this, just have the tone of the background be the tone of the background. Don't even worry about putting stuff back there. That's the great thing. So let me practice. You're going to use my, remember, my big flat. You're going to take the paint right out of the tube. And let's put a few darks down. So you have this transparency. I just love these little flyaways. It's like plucking an eyebrow. Okay, so maybe I just put, because I know the hair gets a little bit darker in here. See how I just kind of, see the difference now? So now this looks deeper and dark. And let's just not touch it again. Let's see if we can put strokes down like this. See, just like a few, like where we want a harder edge and you can soften maybe one edge, but let's leave that so that then we can allow that to be more opaque and that to be more transparent. If you did like 20, let's say just do a little bit like here where the part is. So it just shows you, right? I'm just showing you where you can put a few strokes, but not everywhere. It's like anything, like a highlight you put in just a couple places and the darkest darks you just put in a couple places. Mm -hmm. So I want you to see how I'm just sort of taking, I'm just sort of staining my brush with this paint. It's very, very thin. Just to kind of create that drawing again. That's all. I felt like my, my brush got a little bit out of hand. to create a little bit slightly softer edge right there. I think less is more with hair. I don't want to add like highlights to this. Um, if you do, first you could try a, um, a bristle brush, but then how about just taking your paper towel and just sort of scratching, scratching to create a highlight. So these are just, I'm just so um, preliminary, helping you think about the least amount you can do. These are practice. So I just don't like that edge. Okay, soften that edge. <laughs> Learning to do a very simple little, just kind of giving that, that jaw softening here. Okay. I could see how you see how you could just fiddle. You could just keep fiddling and fiddling and fiddling, but that's not the lesson. Simplifying, keeping very thin, as little as you possibly can, keeping the eyes. I'm gonna have to put this upside down too. Boy, my painting really looks like a monster upside down, but all right, I'm gonna smile at it. <laughs> all right, so I want you to see the abstraction of her face. You see how, oh, right, the angles, of the jawline and how it is a little bit more straighter on this side but that's what I'm looking for is these angles of the jawline for sure so let me look at both let me look at both I think I need to bring back a little bit more of this forehead I think I need to bring this hair just a little bit more in front of this face oh I think I need to I was bringing back that jawline, but you know what it looks like? I need, to, I need to maybe even bring back a little bit more in the light of the jaw over there. 
So these are the type of things that it helps you because we're only looking at it abstractly. And I'm gonna limit myself to say, I can do these things in just a few strokes. Tell yourself that, like not that you're just gonna noodle this painting upside down, but you're training yourself to see, oh, right, the alignment. Oh, okay, what, what did I do? I actually feel like I need to bring maybe this, this angle, maybe just a, a hair in. So those little um, angles of the jaw and the cheek, that's what's gonna help me get it to be a little bit more look like her. Um, and I'm gonna try and do them in just one stroke here or there. I'm just gonna reinforce how thin my paint was. Very, very, very thin. I would love to use this neck thing. I just don't know, we'll see. We'll see if it's gonna work for me. All right, so first things first is I'm going to fix this. See this edge? I'm gonna fix that. So I'm gonna do just a slight in the light, but maybe just a littlest bit of a tone. Figure out where, a lot of times I need like a, like a cane or something just to steady my hand, but I'm just gonna put my pinky down. All right. Now I'm going to get it a little bit darker. So walk, go to the eye and walk, 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 walk. And it's just this, this kind of dark comes a little bit more this way. All right, one down. What's the next thing? I'm gonna bring back that jaw a little bit, a little bit more in the light. Make sure my brush doesn't get too wet with paint. Always be in control of how much paint you have. So that's why it's a little bit easier to paint, um, you know, with thin paint first. So let's see exactly where is that neck? Where is that jaw? This is a very tiny little change down here. I felt like she has a very strong jaw. And her jaw actually disappears into her neck. So since I'm not doing any subtleties in here, I'm gonna be pretty, you know, edited. Less value plain. So just give her a little bit. Okay, second thing down. Okay, what was the, oh, okay. Let me dry my brush. I like, I like this brush a lot because it has, you know, a round tip so I can draw, but it also has a softness. So I'm gonna just take the tiniest bit of that half tone or that middle. See exactly where, where does that part come? The part comes right there. So it starts to angle this way. Kind of just using the paint that's already there. I feel like some of that turning came more inside the face. So I was making her face just a little bit too wide and it's probably because there was hair there. I don't see her cheekbone over there. Okay, so that's a little bit straighter. All righty. Figure out where her jawline comes. All right. And then just give her a little bit more chin. So see how I'm trying to do these little changes with as little as bit as possible. I'm just training myself to see the smallest little angles and see what I possibly can do, all right? I felt like I'm gonna soften that. Hmm. Do, do, do. All 
All right, one last thing. Okay, so one last thing is I love, look at what I did. I cut this Eclipse Long Comber 30, three, um, 3 eighths to fit in my Peshaw box. So that's the funny thing is that whenever I've had some of these small, you know, longer brushes, what I like to do is I literally like to take a long haired brush and use the paint that's already there. So instead of adding more paint, I might just put my brush down here and literally just put it down very, very gently and just go into the hairline. You know, and always wipe it off. But maybe, you know, so sometimes you just take, and I look, I love how it's splayed. That's the perfect thing for me. You know, the easiest and most basic way to create a good hairline is just to soften it with a dry brush. Not even trying to create, you know, a half tone there. So I want to just put one right here too, just from that light. See how this picks it paint up? So that's the issue is that sometimes even when you have the smallest, most gentlest touch, sometimes it picks paint up. And this is kind of like how you get soft edges. But to be perfectly honest with you, your edges will get too soft. So going back to my sable, and I'm just gonna reestablish this a little bit. Oh my gosh, it's like I'm holding my breath. So this is how paintings can go. You get the big shapes in and then these like kind of like transitions is stuff where you put in, you take out, you put in, you take out. But I want in the very beginning not to worry so much about that. I just wanted to show you that if you had a shape and you felt that it was getting too strong, just take a soft brush with no paint and just sort of put it and like drag it off. And, and that will teach you to have maybe a softest touch possible. It's kind of like maybe a surgeon, right? Or somebody that does anything that has to have a gentle, like learning how to be dex dexterous with your hands. It's like just teaching yourself to have a very delicate touch with your brushes. Alrighty, I think that's all I'm gonna do for this little sketch.